ladies and gentlemen, this is Sir Cypher here, and uh, after I made that game, or that, that super long video of me uh, um, waxing poetic over uh, Cold War vehicles, I uh, decided to kind of show a video more specifically of, of how I use that deck, um, which is not very well, but I mean, uh, hopefully you'll get an idea if you decide to play this game of uh, kind of like what kind of units you should call in the beginning of the game, where you should be going, what you should be doing, because I feel like I'm at least average at this game, so um, you can maybe look at my mistakes and do better, and then you'll be really good. So that's that's my plan. Um, so you see here, um, this is supposed to be a, th a three v or four v four, but one of our allies dropped, and it's kind of a bad example because. Um, both of my allies kind of have like gimmick decks, which doesn't mean they're not good, but they're just kind of gimmicky. Um, the one guy, all he has is basically Swedish infantry and the Swedish clown guards, the uh, TGB-13, which is pretty much the only one-point truck transport that didn't get nerfed for its off-road speed. So these things can drive off-road fast as hell, um, and they're only one point, so they're basically the best one-point transport in the game. So they're the best choice for getting your bloodthirsty Swedes to the front line. And my other ally, all he basically brought was uh, automatic Swedish artillery, um, the Bacon ones, and a bunch of fobs to supply them. I like to call them the Bacons. Um, I kind of have a little bit more um, sort of standard deck, and uh, I decided I was going to go for Foxtrot. The first thing you want to do is decide between your allies who's going where, and then you need to think about... Um, how you're going to get there and how you're going to defend it. So I'm always very paranoid about the enemy getting there first. So um, I have a little helicopter squadron here to go first to go seize this area. And then I have backing it up an armored convoy. So some things that you want to think about is um, generally for your first vehicle in your convoy, you want it to be some sort of anti-air thing that can fire on the move. Um, unless, of course you're charging into enemy territory, then you want like a tank or something, but um, if it's your beginning convoy, you generally want some sort of um, uh, thing that can fire in the move, so if any uh, pesky attack helicopter pops up, um, it can just gun it down. Um, odds are though, if your convoy gets bombed, it's going to be really bad, but still you want to do that. You generally don't want to put your command vehicle in the front, but I do because I'm bad at this game. And then generally you want a couple tanks, you want some infantry, uh, you want some recon, and you want some anti-air. So you see here, I have two shop rails for anti-air. I have a Bradley Scout. I have some tanks. Um, I have the Pivads is the first thing. And then I have my little helicopter convoy over here with the rest. Um, so you see that uh, you generally want to escort your helicopter drops at the beginning of the game, especially if you're American. Uh, because... Uh, if you're playing pack, most of the Russian transports have guns all over them, so you don't always need to escort them, but the American ones don't, um, so you kind of need to escort them. So I have the Super Cobra, which can shoot down air and ground, bleeding the way, even though it's really expensive, so that's kind of dangerous. And then I have, backing it up, I have a Kiowa with stingers on it, so it can help shoot down enemy helicopters. And then also I have my Recon Kiowa here to um, check out what's going on ahead of time. So the big thing I have here is Stinger Infantry, because that way, um, once the Stingers are here, the rest of my guys can pretty much drive up in peace, because uh, if any enemy helicopters come over this river, they're going to get shot at by a bunch of Stinger guys in the woods, and they're probably going to have to back off. Um, I sent my Marines up way ahead, because I want to put them in this forest, because um, once I get them in this forest, they're going to be hard to get out. And then I'll have a little foothold here, so if an enemy tries to come across this bridge, I'm going to get vision of them from the Marines in the woods. The Marines are going to shoot at them, and the enemy is going to have to clear this out first. Um, what I don't want is just a bunch of enemy guys lined up on the side of the road shooting at me. And I also don't want enemy troops in these woods, because when I want to come across this bridge and attack, I don't want to be shot at from this hill. Um, the reason my Scout Kiowa is way over here, or my uh, Stinger Kiowa, is because... Somebody spotted an enemy command chopper, and I thought I'd go snipe it really quick, but I couldn't find it because we lost vision of it, and it gets shot down by uh, Strellas, which are um, pretty good missile AA that can fire on the move. Um, like I was talking about, they're leading the convoy. 
um, they blast it down my helicopter. Now, and that's actually kind of a good point. Um, one Pavads, like I had leading the convoy, is not really going to do anything. You actually kind of want a couple uh, anti, uh, anti air vehicles that can fire on the move at the front of your convoy. So, yeah, all of the Swedish guys get dropped off in this village. Um, and uh, so, yeah. And then, um, backing it up, we have, uh, we have the Bacons, who are, um, yep, being Bacons. They're, uh, just launching huge amounts of shells. The reason they can shoot so fast is because they're actually, uh, auto-loading. They have, I think, a six-round magazine in them, so they can just, uh, fire a bunch of rounds really quick. I might call a Nighthawk in over here on a pretty, uh, what I thought was a fairly low-risk target. Um, because I, I wasn't all established here yet. I knew there was no way I was going to attack across this area. Um, so I thought I would just help my allies with some airplanes. Now you can see here the reason why I like to put a lot of troops in helicopters. Obviously, um, their anti-air could have shot this down. But um, if you need to get something like recon or missile troops to a forward location really quickly... Um, jeeps and such just take to, or, you know, track, or wheeled vehicles, ground vehicles tend to take too long, especially if there's cover in the way, um, but the little helicopter can just fly over here and drop them off, which is pretty cool. Um, no, nothing that exciting over here. Um, we decided that I was going to take Delta and Foxtrot, and, um... Trailus was going to take the left at Echo, and uh, Instant Infantile was going to take the center and support everybody with his bacon, bacon barrage here. So many bacons. And uh, so uh, I don't like to be hasty when I play this game, um, which is kind of a problem. Uh, a lot of people like to do these, these bold moves, like charging away with all these Panzer guys, throwing them all in the town. I never do stuff like that, which is good and bad. It's bad because a lot of times I let the enemy take forward positions that they shouldn't take. Um, but I think it's good because a lot of times it saved me from losing a bunch of troops like that are in a way forward position. Um, so it depends. Everybody has their own play style. I play pretty conservatively. Um, but even though I play pretty conservatively, I tend to mess up quite a lot. Like, for example, my helicopter at the beginning getting shot down um, by those guys. This is just a barrage here because we're, uh, I think we think the, actually, who shot that there? Hmm. I don't know. I think he was maybe trying to clear out these this recon infantry that my ally landed in those woods. So uh, another another part where um, I overextend and I and I mess up is uh, um, you generally you don't want to you don't you you don't want to send in your expensive planes in areas that you don't know what the AA coverage is like because it's just not worth it generally because um, they're gonna die. So I see this command vehicle and I'm like it must die. So, uh, I call in a Nighthawk to bomb it, but then I lose vision of it. I try and, uh, regain vision. Well, you'll I'm about to lose vision of it. And my little Hueys are too slow, um, to catch up to it in time. So my Nighthawk's just coming in blind. I have no idea where it is. I'm also flying right over the enemy AA cover, which is bad. So, I just drop, I just drop a bomb at a random spot. Hope I hit it, um, and my Nighthawk, I think, actually gets shot down, uh, and I don't even kill the command vehicle. So you don't want to do that, and then my scouting Hueys are going to get shot down as well. So you don't want to do that. You want to be very careful. Nighthawk's 150 points. Uh, you don't want to just throw it in somewhere and hope you get a hit. Not worth it. Um, because, yeah... You can see here the enemy has been mortaring these woods, but 
bordering a woods if you don't have if you don't know where the infantry are in the woods it's just not going to do anything um, if you want to just area denial something like woods you need to just drop napalm on it or you know, rocket napalm rockets or something um, mortars aren't really going to do that much against infantry in woods unless you know where the infantry are Over here, the Swedish infantry are still just being awesome and uh, getting shelled and not giving a shit. I had my Seahawk over here. It's a, I, I feel like it's always a good idea if you're not planning to attack right at that moment to uh, have any mobile assets like helicopters and stuff and airplanes ready to help out your allies. Um, like I had my Seahawk over here to help push back um, enemy tank attack. Um, because, you know, uh, you want to concentrate your force if you can to help your allies. Especially if you and your opponent are in a stalemate. So the most important thing in this game is really to know, know what's going on. Um, because otherwise your units are expensive and you're going to lose them for no reason. So you see here I reveal all this guy's um, party. And it gets um, beconned uh, by my ally. Shells it out. Now, I think the enemy has actually been trying to counter battery fire um, the pecans, but um, like I think there was an artillery battery here. But the problem is, my ally has so many pecans that as soon as an enemy already um, shoots at it, um, the pecans are just going to fire like a thousand rounds back and it's going to get blown out. So you can see here more, more pecan rounds coming in. I scoop my rangers up a little bit closer because I want to get better vision of this area. And again, the advantage is, is that the enemy has no idea what's in this forest. They don't know if they're dead or not. Um... Um, but I can see quite a bit of their stuff um, with my infantry. So I bring up four MBT-70s, which is kind of dumb. This is this is how you this is how you don't do an attack. You don't just drive you don't just drive up a bunch of expensive tanks um, and uh, see what happens. So I take take that in note. And also, you notice right here, I have no air cover. No air cover. Um, protecting my guys. So there's that. Um, this is actually a pretty a pretty good idea to to do sometimes. If you if you know there's no enemy air cover in range, like you can see those guys are pretty far off. You can kind of use ATGMs to uh, snipe some guys. See there, my Cobra uh, with its uh, with its uh, anti-air missiles actually blasted the crap out of this SU-25, which I think is pretty funny. Um, it's always embarrassing if you're uh, Fancy attack plane gets shot down by my uh, <laughs> by my Super Cobra um, with its little anti-air missiles. So you see here, the reason I brought the MBT-70s is because they can shoot these anti-tech missiles, which actually shoot really far. So I thought ah, I can snipe some guys. Um, but again, I have no air cover, which is why they were able to drop all these bombs on my MBT-70s. Um, um, so yeah, and then what you really don't want to do here is you can see here because they only have four missiles each. Um, they shoot all their missiles, and I, I keep attacking, um, and I'm just planning to shoot the main gun, which is a horrible idea. You never want to do that. You always want to try and keep units supplied if you can. Um, if you have a vehicle like this where its most effective weapon is out. Um, you should just drive it down here. I even already have a Super Chinook here waiting for them, but um, I'm a big dummy and I drive up here to shoot these T-72s with their um, with them just shooting normal rounds out of their cannons, which aren't going to do shit to a T-72. So I think I realized that I've made a mistake. Nope, I don't. I just keep shooting at it, um, which gives an opportunity for the enemy to uh, Call in uh, all the airplanes in the world to just murder my tanks. 
murder my scout helicopters again because I have no air. My Super Cobra doesn't even have any more missiles left. I'm sending my Seahawk up here for some stupid reason. Um, these MiG-35s just gun <laughs> my Super Cobra down. Um, so yeah, this is not this is not what you want to do. They drop napalm on them. Um, tanks out of position with no air cover are basically just sitting ducks. Um, so you don't want to do that. One funny thing here is the MBT-70s actually have an auto cannon on the roof as well. So they were uh, shooting at these guys while they were driving down the road, which is kind of funny. What's also kind of funny is uh, these things have no armor. So the Marines can actually blow them up with their uh, M60 machine guns. So they're actually shooting uh, down at them with the machine guns. I really like the tracer, the, the tracer fire, how it looks. Um, especially when it bounces off the ground because that's actually kind of what it looks like in real life. Um, except it's actually never that uniform. The tracers go everywhere. But um, it just looks cool. Um, and then this enemy air, this, that, the, those guys are actually anti-air units, but they were really cheap non-radar guided ones. So my Seahawk can actually outrange it as it sits in the middle of this tree, um, semi-unrealistically. Well, not even semi-unrealistically, very unrealistically. Helicopters and trees cannot occupy the same area at the same time, um, without bad things happening. So, um, it's a little, uh, too late. The enemy sent, uh, my ally sent all of these, uh, planes over here, I think, to, uh, try and shoot down all these helicopters. But the helicopters already scooted out of there, um, which is unfortunate. So I lost a bunch of guys there. That's not, you don't want to do that. You want to, um, uh, think about when you attack. If I had had some shop rolls or some hawks, um, some pivads, even if my, um, even if I had, uh, one of these, uh, stinger, stinger Kia was, which I actually called in both of them after that escapade. Um, if I had one of had those hovering over here, I could have shot down all those attack helicopters. The enemy attack planes would have still probably dropped their bombs, but I could have shot them down afterwards and it would have been worth it. Um, so yeah, lesson lesson learned don't <laughs> don't do what i just did um but another another thing in there is that if i feel like if your attack is pretty obviously failing um don't just throw in a bunch of troops to keep it going um just try and retreat what you can and sort of like accept your losses um there's sort of a saying uh i don't know i think it's maybe sun sun Tzu or something but it's don't reinforce failure so if you're failing at something, don't don't reinforce it. Um, don't think like, well, maybe if I put more guys, it'll work. Maybe you just have a bad plan and you need to come up with a different plan. Um, I think the more sort of modern saying is, don't throw good money. Uh, don't throw out. Don't throw good money after bad. Um, so if you lost money on something, don't just throw more money at it, hoping that that'll solve the problem. So I decided to actually just send up my one Abrams here because I'm like, well, that has a lot of rounds. And I have vision of this area to my Marines, but unfortunately my Marines just got blasted. Um, and they're burning. <laughs> their poor bodies are burning in the forest. These other Marines are silently watching their brethren um, in memory of them. But I sent up my Abrams here because I feel like, eh, um, I can kind of have a little sniping war over here with these guys. Uh, so that's what I do, and it actually seems to be working okay as I snipe a few tanks. Um, the enemy snuck a bunch of BMPs through the forest, but I dropped napalm on them. And uh, my Bradleys actually just, my Bradleys and my uh, starships just go to town on them with their auto cannons somehow, um, and they manage to just uh, keep them suppressed so that uh, all these infantry are panicked. And uh, yeah. Uh, infantry in this game and vehicles that are under fire can't do much. So theoretically, like if I had just driven up and not seen these guys, um, all of my tanks would have been in trouble. But these guys drove right out of the forest. Uh, my entire formation just opened up on them. And I think I only lost one starship to all that. Now the enemy has already coming in. I'm not sure what kind of already it is, but artillery is not that effective against 
sort of like tanks and heavily armored vehicles, uh, ATVs. But either way, I just decide, like, I'm going to pull out here. Um, I got a little scared after what happened last time. And I thought I'll just pull back um, and repair all my guys. And I'll just come back later. I still have the Marines in the forest. I still have some vision. I still have the Rangers. So I felt kind of like, you know, pull back. And, you know, in this game, taking territory isn't the point. Um, you get more troops. It, you get more uh, income if you have more territory. But it doesn't really gain you anything besides that so um if you need to pull back just pull back because you know what's the harm unless you're actually going to lose a sector so that's what i do um i notice here now because i still have all this vision that the enemy has all these attack helicopters um i think the enemy was waiting you can see here you can tell helicopters to hover super low where um they have a lot of stealth because they basically can hide in terrain just like or hide behind forests and stuff just like vehicles can. I think he was expecting my troops to come down this road after I killed all his stuff, but they didn't. Instead, um, I can see him. He can't see me. I still don't think he realizes I have troops in this forest, which is kind of funny. I think he thought there was only those rangers there that he killed. Um, instead, I've got Stinger Kiowas, um, which actually almost gets shot down by all those these auto cannons, which is kind of funny. Um, but they do manage to uh, shoot down all of these MiGs. Um, the advantage being that uh, Stingers are fire and forget. They're infrared. They shoot pretty fast. So um, you can just unload all four Stingers pretty quickly at an enemy helicopter formation. Um, you don't have to wait for each one to get shot down. So, uh, yeah. And you can see here my little Super Chinooks supplying... Supplying my guys. Um, getting everybody. You really actually want to be careful about this because supply vehicles blow up if they get hit. So you really shouldn't have empty supply <laughs> helicopters sitting all around your base. But like I said multiple times, I'm not super great at this game. So that's my, that's my excuse. Um, I, feel, I, I feel like if I claim to be really good at this game, then I'd have to make up excuses for how I'm doing it. But... I'm bad, so I'm allowed to do bad things, like keep empty supply helicopters all over the place. I was just scouting with another Huey here, because I wanted to see what he had, but unfortunately it got shot down by a rocket before um, it could see much. So my allies are still doing good, pretty pretty well here. You can see the, the winner in points is, uh, see so like, talk about empty supply trucks. Uh, <laughs> The fobs ran out of supplies, and you see, uh, once you actually have to start using trucks, the numbers needed to keep up this artillery barrage. And I think he's actually using four bacon, only using four bacons now because uh, uh, he was just it was just taking too many supplies to uh, keep them all firing. But the bacon the bacon barrage is still going. I'm over here sniping tanks with the Seahawk. Sniping, sniping tanks with uh, ATGM choppers is actually a really good thing to do and lulls in the fighting because, um, you know, the enemy might have a tank, have a couple tanks in a forward position and uh, good anti-tank choppers have about the same range as, uh, as anti-air stuff. So if the tanks are in front of the anti-air um, or the anti-air is kind of behind cover or something, your helicopters can sneak up and snipe a couple tanks and get away before the enemy can rearrange their AA. I actually get a little greedy there. And my Seahawk uh, scoots out of there by the skin of its teeth um, and avoids getting shot. Um, but now that all my troops are, um, are uh, re, uh, rearmed and repaired, I decide to move up here again. Um, I don't actually really have any cheap tanks. Or vehicles in this army pretty much everything's expensive and I and I want I need to scout up ahead so I don't really want to send the actual recon Bradley because it costs like 80 points so I'm sending my 40 point starship here instead because uh, it's a little bit more uh, expendable really it's not expendable it's kind of expensive I should just drive it down the road and see if it dies but like I said not very good so um, it's actually kind of funny because, like, normally you're playing the game, you're just looking at these these blue these 
these uh, rectangles. You don't really have time during the game to actually um, zoom in and see what's going on, but um, it actually looks really cool. From close range, you even have here all of the little um, push down wheat and stuff and grass as you drive down the field. The uh, just looks really cool. So I screwed up here. I have the Seahawk here for defense. What I, my goal here is actually just to take out this uh, his command vehicle here in Kilo because uh, this is a uh, reinforcement zone. And um, I don't like it. I want it to be dead. So I drop Napalm on the forest to hopefully um, draw it out of there. And, and then I pull Napalm back here so he can't just drive it away. Um, it's trapped. Trapped by the Napalm. Um, uh, which is actually, you, you don't always just use Napalm to flush units out of forest. Sometimes you can actually use it to block areas. Pretty effective thing to do at the beginning of the game is to Napalm the road. Um, in front of a major town, so the enemy can't just straight up drive there. He napalms me in retaliation, um, and then he sends a fighter, which gets shot down by all of my allies' cheap fighters. And I'm tired of getting bombed, so I just call in two Tomcats here, which really shouldn't be this close to the front line. There's no point. Their missiles go like six miles, so there's no, <laughs> there's no reason, no reason to do that. But yeah. But what I meant about the napalm is, is for example, the enemy. Um, could have just napalmed this road at the beginning of the match and then my ally wouldn't have been able to just drive all his Swedish vans in here. He'd have to drive around this flaming forest. It would take a lot of time um, and uh, allow the enemy to get there first. So that is an interesting thing. Uh, you see there my Hellcat uh, or my uh, Seahawk throw fires a Hellfire, manages to snipe his command vehicle, which is my goal the whole time. Not sure why my patent's driving up there. Um, he just wants to be a hero and get in there. So the enemy, I think, at this point is just mad. <laughs> and he doesn't want to... He, uh, he just keeps calling in all of these tanks. He called in like, like 15, 20 tanks. Um, and he's just determined to push me out of there. I'm determined to not get pushed out. So um, I'm calling in up... Um, a bunch of uh, helicopters in support, a bunch of supplies to uh, keep the guy pushed back. Fortunately this time I have some Abrams who actually have decent amounts of ammo so I can uh, stay in the fight a little bit longer. One weird thing that which is always kind of funny is this, the, uh, the, the better scout Kiwa actually has a rocket pod on it which is kind of funny because uh, It'll always fire its rockets at some point and not do anything, but um, it's just kind of funny. So you can see here the enemy tanks coming up this road. I don't think these tanks actually have stabilizers, so I'm not sure why they're just driving and shooting. Maybe they're just not in range yet. Um, but yeah, I'm just firing, firing as fast as I can. Um, and this is really kind of like the best thing that can happen in, the, in a game is that the enemy just gets mad and they just they just start throwing stuff at you um, because they're mad and you end up just getting just ridiculous numbers ridiculous numbers of kills because they're just not caring about what units they're using <laughs> they're not all they want to do is kill you um, so it just kind of becomes a shooting gallery one thing that's kind of funny is a helicopters on the ground can still lock on and fire their weapons as long as the enemy is in their sort of like cone of sight. So uh, you see, <laughs> you see here that the uh, the super curve is just chilling here on the ground um, <laughs> while it's getting reloaded, shooting uh, toes at all these tanks. I like to imagine the technician is uh, putting the new missiles on one side just as the missiles are firing off the other side. And the enemy keeps arting me, but again, it doesn't really do that much um, against uh, armored vehicles. I mean, it'll take out my Bradleys, and it can panic and uh, damage my Abrams. It can actually just murder my helicopters on the ground, but um, he didn't seem to actually hit any of those. You see here my Super Cobras are like completely out of ammo, because they've shot so many missiles.
And at this point, we've we've basically we looked at the score. We're like, oh crap, we almost won. So we just both call in. Um, these these are the markers for where vehicles are going to go once you finish calling them in. We just both call in boatloads of troops of tanks to just um, be silly. Um, because yeah, he's he's even calling in more here. Uh, see here, the Swedes, the Swedes, and these burnt out. Surrounded by their by their burnt out clown cars, still hold the town. For some reason, I don't think they ever drop napalm on the town. If this guy's ally, instead of dropping napalm on my tanks here, dropped it on the town, he would have killed like all these Swedes. But uh, didn't for some reason. You can see here my rifles, my riflemen made it out of these these Bradleys before they exploded. I'm getting shot at by all kinds of stuff. Um, and I'm actually kind of getting flanked here, but doesn't really matter. Um, at this point, we've already we've already won. You see this very expensive Soviet plane, SU-27, getting chased out of there by a swarm, swarm of cheap Swedish planes. I think they're Swedish. They're some sort of Nordic country, the Vigans. And uh, I forget what actually... How did these... Oh! Oh, he temporarily was able to gain control of the sector with his command vehicle. Called it a bunch of Swedes in their clown cars. Where are they coming from? Um, did he have control of this at some point? I don't know. But there are Swedes. Swedes everywhere. Get, getting murdered by autocannons. At, uh, I guess they man we managed to kill something in the game, man. So, hopefully it'll give you kind of an idea of uh, at least how one deck is played, you know, what I like to do at the beginning of the game, the importance of scouting, the importance of air cover. Um, don't do what I do and send unsupported tanks that are out of ammo um, with no air cover against a bunch of Soviet tanks with uh, air cover and chopper cover and ATGM cover. So don't do that, what I did. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.